I mentioned in the last video centered around Meganium that the Gen 2 starters are probably the most forgotten about and underutilized starter Pokemon when it comes to the anime, merchandise, and promotional material. Typhlosion is no exception. Typhlosion doesn't even appear in any of the Johto episodes of the anime. It did get a little bit of a spotlight in the Legend of Thunder special they did where you got to see Jimmy's Typhlosion, but to not include the Fire-type starter in the Adventures of Ash Ketchum is a big slap in the face. And this fiery weasel badger deserves better than that. So, let's see how it fared in the TCG. That's what you're here for, right? The first Typhlosion printed was, of course, in Neo Genesis, starting with this Typhlosion, the Fire Boost one that came in the Neo Genesis Premium File folder. It's not great. It does have a very interesting ability in Fire Boost, but when it comes to Neo Genesis Typhlosions, this one just does not stack up to the other one, which had a much more playable Pokemon power in Fire Recharge. Now, Fire Pokemon tend to discard Fire Energy a lot. Fire Recharge Typhlosion basically turns that into a strength in its ability to accelerate Fire Energy for any other type of Fire Pokemon that you could pair it with. Upon release, it was commonly paired with Blaine's Arcanine, for a much faster, hard-hitting version of a typical fire deck. But it also served as a really great tool for building more consistent, stable Charizard decks. But the Blaine's Arcanine pairing was much better because you could also utilize Cinnabar Gym as a stadium card, which eliminated the water type weakness for all Pokemon with Blaine in their name, meaning that you could actually go up against a Feraligator deck and stand a chance. Unfortunately for this Typhlosion, a better Fire Energy Accelerator was released two sets later in Neo Revelation with Entei. Using Entei meant you had more room in your deck for other cards instead of using a Stage 2 Evolution line, and its Howl Pokemon power was actually faster when it came to getting Fire Energy onto Pokemon. So moving on to Neo Destiny's Dark Typhlosion. Strangely, there was a Dark Typhlosion and a Dark Feraligator, but no Dark Meganium. As the star of its own deck, or even as a support card in a fire deck, this card's not that great. Where it does shine, though, is in Base Neo Shapeshift builds, in which you use Brock's Ninetales to transform into various evolution cards depending on how you need to hit your opponent's weaknesses. Because Dark Typhlosion is a little bit bulky as a stage two and can attack four colorless energy, it makes a pretty great splash addition to that deck, especially if you're running all dark evolutions. That way you can utilize Boss's Way and Rocket's Hideout. Other evolutions included in this type of build are Dark Fluffy, Dark Gengar, and Dark Ursaring. Next is Blaine's Typhlosion from the Japanese exclusive Versus series. And this card's actually pretty great for a basic Pokemon. 70 HP, low energy curve, can attack on its first turn, and hot air is dealing 30 damage for 2 fire energy, plus you get a free gust of wind. Could have been the new Fossil Magmar for Neo decks if the set had ever gotten a translation. Expedition had two Typhlosions. This one wasn't great. I mean, it's pretty good. It's more like your standard starter deck Pokemon. I am not a fan of the artwork. I would say that the other Typhlosion is much better. At first, its Pokemon power doesn't seem all that great because it is situational, but you're not going to be up against a whole lot of low energy decks in this format. And the Pokemon power is stackable if you have multiple Typhlosion in play at once. But the problem there is if you're accelerating more than one Fire Energy per turn, you're going to catch up to your opponent's energy count pretty quick. Which, by that point in time, you're already attacking for 50 damage, so do you really need it? In the EX Sandstorm expansion, we got our first Typhlosion EX. Its energy costs are ridiculous, even for a Stage 2 because you're going to be using Rare Candy to get to Typhlosion EX anyway, 
And by the time you could get five energy onto this thing to even use Split Blast, which is only dealing 100 damage and not worth five energy, this thing's gonna be knocked out and your opponent's gonna take two prizes, which is especially easy since Typhlosion EX has two weaknesses. It also seems like this card was kind of meant to be played in double battles or two versus two battles, and that playstyle never really took off, so this card just not that great. On to EX Unseen Forces, quite possibly my favorite expansion to ever hit the TCG, so it's no surprise that I really like the Typhlosion from Unseen Forces. Great artwork, decent HP, it's got a polka body that's like an early version of the Dragon Frontier's Flygon EX where you're continually putting damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. In this case you're also stacking them on yourself, but that tends to work in your favor whenever you get three energy stacked on here and want to use Rage. It couldn't really stand up to any of the big EX archetypes at the time, but in a rogue deck, this Typhlosion could be super fun because you can turn one rare candy into Typhlosion, use Flickering Flames to put your opponent to sleep, in between turns they're taking 10 damage off of your 20 for 1 energy damage, and then in a couple more turns, once you've also stacked some damage counters on yourself, you can hit them with a big Rage for a knockout. Unseen Forces also brought a new Typhlosion EX, which did have 40 more HP because of course it's an EX, it's worth two prizes, but is weirdly less usable than the single prize Typhlosion. Bursting up is a good power, but only late game. You're taking away that efficiency of rare candy and straight into Typhlosion on turn one and getting some use out of it because Turn one, bursting up's not going to yield you a lot of fire energy that you can throw down on this Typhlosion for the four energy Kindle attack that's dealing 80 damage. You're also discarding an energy off of your opponent, but still at the cost of one of your own. So the upgrade from regular Typhlosion to Typhlosion EX, you're losing all of that efficiency. And so for me at least, Typhlosion EX is actually a worse card with lower usability than its little brother from this set. It is a good late game support card, but when you're in a format with Blastoise EX and you've got a weakness to water, you don't really have time to wait until late game to start accelerating on energy. Dragon Frontiers is another one of my favorite sets due to the sheer creativity and variety that it brought to the metagame. At this point, we're deep into the Delta Species gimmick where we got Delta Species Typhlosion, which is a psychic type. It's got a, an interesting power and shady move where as long as Typhlosion is your active, you can move a damage counter from one of your opponent's Pokemon to the other, like old school Gengar. This card's basically just like a starter deck Pokemon. It's not going to have a whole lot of usability outside of any deck that's not Psychic Fire or that utilizes a lot of rainbow energy shenanigans like with Electrode or Cast Form. Even then, Burning Ball isn't all that great, and Shady Move would be a lot better if it didn't require Typhlosion to be in the active position. Otherwise, it might have been a good support card, but as it stands, it, it really just looks cool. Mysterious Treasures, the Diamond and Pearl era, gave us this Typhlosion, which in theory, on paper, should have been a good Typhlosion. Firestarter is a great ability and it can be used from the bench, so it's a great support card. Evaporating Heat deals decent enough damage for three energy, but it's a counter, potentially, for Empoleon, which was dominating the Diamond and Pearl format. Unfortunately, when it came to fire type decks, there was already a fire starter, so to speak, that was doing a much better job. Infernape was just too good to ignore. It had a free retreat cost as opposed to Typhlosion's two. It could attack on turn one after a rare candy. Flare Blitz did 90 damage for two energy. And yeah, there's potential there for a combo because Flare Blitz does require you to discard both of those fire energy. So why not just free retreat between Infernapes, use Typhlosion's ability to get fire energy out of the discard, attach the Infernape, attach a fire energy from your hand for your energy per turn, and then, bing bang boom, have a Flare Blitz ready to go every single turn. Well, a lot of people did try to make this work, even took it to tournament play, including myself, but it turns out that it just was too slow and couldn't match up to the tried and true Infracaddy combo, which not only served as a great one-two punch between Flare Blitzes, but it also kept you from decking out. 
So the potential for this Typhlosion was still there, it's just, it was outclassed. Thankfully, Typhlosion got a little bit of redemption in the Heart Gold and Soul Silver set where we got Typhlosion Prime. Again, we got a variation of the same type of Pokemon power with Afterburner where you can take a fire energy from your discard pile, attach it to one of your Pokemon, and put a damage counter on that Pokemon. Afterburner is useful because you can do it from the bench, Typhlosion doesn't have to be your active Pokemon, and you can begin using it on turn one once you use Rare Candy to evolve straight into Cyndaquil to Typhlosion. Any deck that used this card maybe carried one copy of Quilava, but for the most part, 4-4 line of Typhlosion Prime. Flare Destroy wasn't great, so Typhlosion Prime was relegated to being more of a support card for better Fire-type attackers, most notably Resha Ram from the Black and White base set. There's great synergy between these cards. You can turn one Rare Candy into Typhlosion, have a Resh Ram in the active position, use Afterburner, get your energy per turn onto Resh Ram, and the Afterburn energy, meaning that you're set up for an Outrage on your first attacking turn, and you've already got an extra damage counter on there, so it's gonna deal at least 30 damage. Reshiram is a basic with 130 HP, so stacking those damage counters isn't really gonna threaten it early game. You can get off bigger and bigger outrages by using Afterburner. With trainer cards in this format, it's very easy to get fire energy in the discard by using stuff like Junk Arm especially. So the energy acceleration is no problem. It puts your opponent in a spot where they don't want to put, you know, like two or three damage counters on Reshiram early game because that's just going to make its outrage more powerful without really threatening it at all, not forcing it to the bench. But even if your opponent chooses not to attack you, not to increase the output of Outrage, one more energy next turn and you can blue flare them for 120 damage on turn two. And on top of that, you still have the option to use Afterburner and attach another energy that you have discarded through blue flare onto either this Reshiram or another one that's on your bench. It's powerful, it's fast, it's efficient. It's no surprise that this deck went on to win the Seniors Division at the 2011 World Championships as piloted by Christopher Kahn. And then we don't get another Typhlosion until Breakthrough, and this is almost one of those meme-level fire-type decks reminiscent of the Fiery Licks Heatmore or the Blaine's Magmar-type decks, where Massive Eruption is going to be able to deal a lot of damage, especially if you're building a deck around just Cyndaquil, Typhlosion, bunch of fire energy, and then some trainers or supporters to recycle those cards into the deck. You can deal a lot of damage, but also it leaves you extremely vulnerable, so it's one of those decks where it's high risk, high reward. You're going to lose a lot of games, probably more than you're actually going to win considering the metagame. Doesn't mean you can't have fun with it as a rogue deck. Even Flare Destroy is pretty good. 130 damage is decent, especially considering that you're going to be discarded in energy off your opponent. But the whole point of this Typhlosion rogue deck is going to be turn one, massive eruption. Hope that your opponent just has an active Pokemon, maybe one Pokemon on the bench at this point, but just use a massive eruption, knocking out Pokemon as quickly as possible. It's a little harder with EXs, of course. But this type of deck, though it's not consistent, can be an amazing joy to just take to like a city championships and knock people out on turn one. They don't have a replacement Pokemon. They get very angry and it's enjoyable for you. Some beautiful artwork off of this Typhlosion from Lost Thunder, along with 160 HP, which is the most we've seen on a Typhlosion. Blazing Energy, a little reminiscent of base set Charizard, except it doesn't just turn all of the energy attached to Typhlosion into Fire Energy, it's all energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Lost Flame does cost 4 Fire Energy, you know, you can load those up however you want, use a little bit of acceleration, but even then it's just a little high for that cost, by that time your opponent's going to be able to deal 160 damage to you, but the effect of putting two energy attached to your opponent's active into the Lost Zone is pretty cool actually. But the energy cost really does bog down this card because there's just other fire types that 
have more efficient energy costs that can deal damage a lot more efficiently than Lost Flame. Even with that added effect, it's still not going to slow your opponent down all that much. When the name of the game is dealing as much damage as early as possible, Blazing Energy is not really helping you accomplish that, and so having an attack cost of 4 energy, even when you have sources of acceleration, it's, it's just not going to cut it. Which I guess is just a common theme for Typhlosion cards. But what about Sun and Moon, Black Star promo Typhlosion, that exploder attack, only one energy. You can attach up to three fire energy to your Pokemon in any way you like. That's an amazing attack to use. It's a great support card, right? Well, no, not for a stage two Pokemon when fucking Welder exists. Hey, and that's all the Typhlosion cards we have so far. Let me know down in the comments if you think I misrepresented any of these Typhlosion cards, or if you have more success than I reported with them, or if I missed a Typhlosion card somewhere in the mix, much like this Nintendo Black Star promo Typhlosion that was a alternate artwork reprint of the Unseen Forces Typhlosion. Let me know down below per the huge. Also per the huge, expect a fur alligator TCG history coming to the channel soon. Let me know what types of videos you want to see coming up on the channel. And until next time, bye.